Hi, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot and thank you very much for everyone that watched the Ravenfield video. There were loads and loads of comments on it, way more than I expected. Uh, and as promised, here is part two with all the lovely information you people have survived of supply. Okay, so the first thing to address is in the video I mentioned the parish boundary runs right down the middle of Thriver Reservoir. Um, if you look on Google Maps, that tells you a different story. Uh, I'll put a map in the video somewhere here or here, wherever, to show you it actually runs all the way around it because the reservoir is not part of any parish. That's the kind of discrepancy you find online sometimes. So let's get to the things that you guys mentioned. Firstly, we have uh, Katrine Greenwood who says, the church clock only has one hand and it's recently been restored. It's one of only three churches that have one-handed clocks. Again, that's something I'm not going to know. A fantastic piece of information. Quite a few people mentioned about Ravenfield Ponds. They're actually in Ravenfield Park. Where I went with the waterfall is Fursby Reservoir. So Louise Williamson gave me a whole paragraph full of information. Um, this is quite good. So there was once a shop, uh, an off license in the village called the Long Bar or Ravenfield Jacks. Um, where villagers would take empty beer bottles to have them filled. The last owners were the Marshall family and then they went on to run the post office. There was a manor house in Ravenfield Park. I need to address this because a few people mentioned about the manor house and how there was a prisoner of war camp. Um, I'll come to that in a minute, but Louise also says the Cavalier pub was built in the 1950s, uh, early 1960s. Um, what else do we have here? I got a comment from someone called Christine uh, who says there used to be a quarry in Ravenfield that they used to make um, bird baths, etc. Um, so that's uh, that's something else. Apparently that's uh, near the entrance to the play area. Um, Tony Leach says Ravenfield Common. Braithwell Road used to be called Common Lane. That's probably how Ravenfield Common got its name. Now, as far as the Prisoner of War camp goes, um, I had to research this because there were a couple of um, conflicting comments saying about where it was or things like that. Um, somebody said it was in the manor house that I mentioned and someone else said it, 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 it wasn't so I had to dig into this. Um, and what I found is during the Second World War the park, Ravenfield Park, was initially used for army training and much damage was done by explosives and in the latter part of the war it was used as a prisoner of war camp with the hall being used as an officer's quarters. And sticking with Ravenfield Park on the same website which I will link in the description, the area we now know as Ravenfield Park is a remnant of a deer park owned by the Westby family known to be living in Ravenfield before 1200 AD. It remained with them until 1749 when it was sold to a Miss Elizabeth Parkin. I got a comment on the, on the video itself on YouTube from Steve Johnson. He said that um, if, you, if you go down Garden Lane, there's a path that meets up with the, the one that runs past the church. You can use it as a circular walk. If I'd have known that, I probably wouldn't have driven down Garden Lane. I might have walked it. Long walk, but and then as far as Ravenfield Woods goes, I called them Ravenfield Woods because a lot of people, I think, refer to them collectively as Ravenfield Woods. There are two distinct sections though. One's called um, Gullingwood, the other one is called Silverwood. Um, but I think collectively together they're known as Ravenfield Woods. On the whole, um, fantastic amount of information from people. I didn't expect there to be that big a response for a village that's, it's not the biggest in the world, but there have been loads of comments that have helped me out with making this part two. Uh, and I think that's fantastic. This is exactly what I wanted, what I talked about in the part two of the Catholic video. So thank you to everybody who contributed. It's helped, it, it's helped me as much as it's helped you <laughs> uh, because it means there's more, to, more content to put on my channel, more for people to get interested in. It's fabulous that people want to share the history of their places and I hope this continues. So yesterday I put up a new video, if you haven't seen it already, uh, I went to Ully, um, so feel free to check that out. I've already got a couple of comments on that, but we will make a part two for that in due course. And as always, look out for the next village whenever I put it up. I will likely go out filming at some point today, so who knows, you might get another one tonight. But for now, that's just about it from me. My name's Andy, I've been the Village Idiot, and I'm out.